Previously, we talked about the life cycle of HDL particles. So we talked about how we can synthesize and break down high density lipoproteins. And we also said that HDL plays a very important role in something known as the reverse cholesterol transport pathway. And so in this lecture, we're gonna talk about what this pathway is, why it's so important, and we're gonna see how HDL plays a central role in the pathway. So. Peripheral cells of the body can receive cholesterol from one of two sources. So some specialized cells of the body can actually synthesize cholesterol from scratch. But the majority of cells of the body receive cholesterol by absorbing circulating lipoproteins that carry cholesterol. And so these are the two ways by which cells, peripheral cells of the body, can obtain cholesterol. Now, cholesterol can be used for certain things. So cholesterol, for example, can be used to help build cell membranes. Now, some specialized cells of the body can use cholesterol to also actually synthesize other important molecules. For example, the adrenal cells of the adrenal glands and the cells of the gonads can actually use cholesterol to form hormones. So we can form things like glucocorticoids, so cortisol, we can form testosterone, estrogen, and so forth. In addition, other specialized cells of the body that don't need cholesterol can actually rid the cell of the cholesterol by dumping it outside. For example, enterocytes lining the intestines can simply secrete the cholesterol that is not needed into the lumen of the intestines, and that simply helps form feces. Other cells of the body, for example, cells of the sebaceous glands and cells we call keratinocytes on the skin, can directly secrete that cholesterol that is not needed onto the surface of the skin. But the majority of the peripheral cells of the body actually have no other way of ridding the cell of any unwanted cholesterol. And that's where this reverse cholesterol pathway comes into play. So the majority of other peripheral cells of the body depend on this reverse cholesterol transport pathway to prevent the unwanted buildup of extra cholesterol within the cell. And HDL particles and macrophages actually play a central role in this pathway, as we'll see in just a moment. And this ultimately helps maintain cholesterol homeostasis and reduces the risk of developing atherosclerosis of our blood vessels. So let's talk about what this reverse cholesterol transport pathway is. And everything begins inside macrophages. So here we have a macrophage. So remember, a macrophage is an engulfing cell. It swims around and engulfs all, uh, all sorts of things. And one of the things it can take up is actually cholesterol. So as the macrophage swims around and builds up in its levels of cholesterol, some of that cholesterol is transformed into oxysterols. So oxysterols are basically oxidized versions of cholesterol. As the levels of oxysterols increases, that activates an important nuclear hormone transcription factor known as LXR. LXR moves into the nucleus of that macrophage and it stimulates the expression and the build uh, and the building of these ATP binding cassette proteins known as ABCA1 and ABCG1. And these are surface transporters present in the surface membrane of the macrophage. And what they do is they allow the movement, the efflux of cholesterol out of the cell. Now, ABCA1, what it does is it allows the movement of cholesterol onto circulating ApoA1 protein. So remember, these are immature HDL particles. And as more and more of the cholesterol moves into this immature HDL particles, and then it's converted into cholesterol esters, eventually we help form mature HDL particles. The ABCG1, what it does is it moves the cholesterol and it transports it directly onto these mature HDL particles. So the difference between these two ATP binding set proteins is this ABCA1 moves cholesterol onto immature HDL particles, but the ABCG1 moves it onto mature HDL particles. In addition, some amount of free cholesterol can actually exit the cell via diffusion and then bind onto these mature HDL particles swimming around the capillaries of these cells. Now, 
Once the cholesterol ester is within the core of the mature HDL particle, one of two things can happen. Either the mature HDL particle travels directly onto liver cells, it associates and binds onto the scavenger receptor type B1 receptor, so SRB1, and once bound, the cholesterol can basically move into the cell or these mature HDL particles with the help of an enzyme known as CETP can actually transfer the cholesterol esters onto other lipoproteins that contain ApoB apolipoprotein. So we have things like LDL and VLDLs and so forth. And so these other lipoproteins can then follow a similar pathway, but they associated with things like LDL receptors on the liver. And this mediates receptor-mediated endocytosis. So unlike here, where only cholesterol moves into the cell, here the entire lipoprotein ends up being absorbed by that hepatocyte. And the result is the same. We increase the levels of cholesterol within the liver cells. Now, once inside the hepatocytes, the cholesterol can follow one of two pathways. Either the cholesterol exits the cells of the liver and is dumped directly into bile via the help of these two transporters, so ABCG5 and ABCG8, or the cholesterol can be converted into bile acids, and then bile acids are used to help form bile. And remember, bile is stored in the gallbladder and it's dumped into our intestines where the bile helps emulsify fat and break down the fats into small components, and then those fats can be absorbed into the body and some of that bile and cholesterol is absorbed back in the body but some of it actually exits the body by forming feces. And so to summarize we see that HDL particles the good cholesterol and macrophages play a central role in this reverse cholesterol transport pathway and this is the pathway that allows the majority of the peripheral cells of the body to actually rid the cell of any unwanted extra cholesterol and this helps maintain cholesterol homeostasis and reduces the risk of developing atherosclerosis so the buildup of cholesterol plaque within blood vessels of the cardiovascular system.